So, uh, can I start now? Please, sir. Okay. So, good evening to everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. At the outset, uh, let me thank Lead Masterminds for this opportunity uh, for me to share my views and thoughts on uh, a very important topic, uh, 5G mobile communication. Uh, what are its positives and what are uh, its uh, downsides? Most of you would have come across a uh, lot of published literature on this. Uh, the benefits of the new technology, uh, the challenges it poses to the organizations who implemented some adverse aspects, all would have come in the public domain. So my aim today is to give a very short but a concise summary of all the aspects of 5G mobile communication. Because soon you will all be taking a decision whether you want to uh, uh, go to the new 5G service, whether you want to buy a new 5G enabled uh, mobile phone, all these decisions you would be taking. So I expect that whatever information I give today would be uh, some of some use to you so that you can further uh, uh, develop on it and then uh, take a meaningful decision for uh, requirements. I have a short presentation uh, made for you and uh, I would like to upload my presentation. But before that, let me tell that this is a technologically complex subject. And uh, my attempt would be to make it as simple as possible, uh, especially because uh, uh, there are many people who are not engineers in the, uh, in the webinar number one, and there are many people who are uh, uh, who are in the higher age bracket who have seen mobile fairly late in their life. And therefore mobile technology is not very uh, well, they're not very well versed with mobile technology. So with all these aspects, I uh, will just upload my uh, uh, presentation. Just give me a minute for that. Oh, just a minute. Uh, I think uh, can you see my screen now? Seen earlier. Now it is not seen. Earlier it was seen. Earlier it was seen, okay. I'm trying to get it into the... Uh... Are you able to see the screen now? Yes. Yes, 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 yes sir. sir. You can see that now. Um, okay, now you're able to see it? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, right. So uh, let's start with the presentation. And uh, it's a short talk and i will uh, go it very go through it very slowly because uh, some points need to be uh, made to be emphasized perhaps a couple of times to make sure that you understand it before i start the topic i want you to see this photograph all of you aware uh, these photographs one is your mobile phone which i'll be referring to as handset and uh, there is a sign there, which you're all familiar. You would have seen it so many times in many uh, places, uh, which represents EM energy, which is nothing but electromagnetic energy. So this is a sign for it. We'll be talking more about it. And then you have a photograph of a tower, which may be located very close to your house in your vicinity of your place. And on the tower, you see a lot of structures, which are... Uh, installed which are called the antennae through which you are able to communicate or you're able to transmit, you're able to receive 
But remember, it is in EM energy all this transmission and reception takes place. So with this short background, I just start my presentation. Why I'm giving this presentation now? Why am I sharing this topic with you at this point of time? The government is planning to introduce 5G in our country soon. And the auction for the spectrum is scheduled end of July, end of this month. So it is something which is going to start very soon in our country. In the initial phase, 13 cities will get 5G. In that list of 13, in South India, we have Chennai, Bangalore, and Hyderabad. The rest of the cities are in other parts of India, West, North, East, etc. Uh, if somebody wants more details on it, I can give it during question and answer. Out of 120 crore mobile users in India today, 90 crores are 4G users. And you are aware what is a 4G uh, capability in a mobile. So three-fourths of the mobile users in India are having 4G capable phone or a smartphone. While the balance uh, one-fourth belong to the earlier non-4G era, that is 3G, 2G, etc. So there is a large population today in our country today who are utilizing the current technology, which is 4G. 4G is a prevalent technology in our country for mobiles and they're using it. 75% of it are using it. Now, as I said earlier, you may be very keen to know what to expect from 5G and if there are any downsides. So very briefly, uh, mobile communication, because there are a little one or two technical terms here. Uh, so I just want to am amplify that. Your handset is designed for exchange of voice and videos and images while you're on the move. The handset transmits as well as receives from a tower. Please remember this. Your handset speaks to only a tower. Even when you are traveling in a car, even when you're traveling in a train or a bus, it speaks to a tower through electromagnetic energy. And once the tower receives the signal from you or your data, then it sends to the sender through coaxial cables or fiber optic cables. So it's very important for you to understand a tower does not speak to another tower. The tower speaks only to mobiles. And once the tower has got the signals from the various mobile users who are speaking to it, it converts all that and puts it in cables, fiber optic cables or coaxial cables, and it goes to some exchange from where it goes to the center. So if I'm calling Hari at Trivandrum, I'll speak to a tower, it'll go through fiber optic cables, through some exchange, reach Trivandrum, and then it'll connect through another tower to Hari. And the telecom companies are given specific band of frequencies by the government, which is called the spectrum. You all are familiar with the word spectrum because it is quite infamous as well because it was involved in the famous 2G uh, spectrum uh, uh, auction and uh, corruption, alleged corruption, etc. And this two, uh, the spectrum which is allocated by government for telecom companies are different from what the police and military are using, essentially to avoid interference. I'm just giving you a background so that these are exclusively for public use of mobile communication. There are specific spectrums. Mobile phone technology has seen a huge, huge change in the last 40 years since it started in 1980s as 1G. 1G was started in 1980 and now it is 40 plus years and a huge amount of change has happened, uh, which many of you may be aware of. Before I go to the 4G, which is a prevalent technology, let me spend one more minute on electromagnetic energy because many of the aspects connected with 5G uh, 
service which is going to come has got a linkage to this electromagnetic energy. It's a combination of electric and magnetic waves, but they travel at the speed of light. Just only remember this one sentence, the combination of electric and magnetic waves. All radio sets, all radars, the dish TV in your house, the Bluetooth in your house, the microwave cooker in your house, all operate on electromagnetic energy. But there are different frequencies. And the intensity of the transmission, some are only transmitting, uh, like uh, microwave is only transmitting to heat up your food. The dish TV is only receiving from the satellite. Other things are do play. It, they transmit as well as receive. But the power which is handled depends upon the application. Your Bluetooth may be a very, very minor power while the microwave in full uh, power setting, it may be a very high value. So please remember electromagnetic energy is already there as a part of your life at home as well. And electromagnetic waves are characterized by their frequency, their power. And there's a third term for completeness I'm saying, but it's not relevant to uh, uh, a discussion on today. It's also called polarization is also important, which is used by designers to avoid interference between one channel and another channel. So we leave it at that. But all you have to remember is electromagnetic energy is a combination of electric and magnetic. And it is there uh, prevalent in your house as well for various domestic appliances. Higher the frequency and higher the power, both have got health hazards. So electromagnetic energy at a higher power or at a higher frequency bring along with it some health issues which we'll touch upon later. So I'm going to look at this spectrum, 30 megahertz to 3000 megahertz, which you can see on the screen. Can you see on the left, shortwave radio, 28 megahertz, one line, which is less than 30. Your good old radio, when you hear radio, when you are hearing Radio Ceylon or Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation, it was in this frequency, less than 30. And on the right hand side, you will see another green box, which represents the dish TV in your house. The dish TV in your house receives signal from satellite electromagnetic energy at that frequency. So I just quoting two examples of our applications, which we use the dish TV and the radio, which are also in the electromagnetic spectrum, but we are going to talk about between 30 and 3000 only for today's discussion. So look at this, your FM radio, which you get in your house is between 80 and 100. Air traffic control, a little above that. If you go for an MRI to a hospital, you are exposed to electromagnetic induction, I'm sorry, electromagnetic emission, which is around 250 megahertz during the time you're undergoing that diagnostic uh, procedure. Your mobiles today are between 800 to 2300 megahertz. Your microwave in your house is slightly higher than that. Your Bluetooth in your house is slightly higher to that. So most important here is your mobiles today are operating in a zone which I shown in brown color. If that is the frequency which we are using today. And when you are using mobiles, there is electromagnetic transmission between the mobile set and the tower and from the tower to your mobile, which is always taking place. Just remember that. So I just given the history of mobile communication, how 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G happened. There has been great advancements in technology. Uh, they have been able to enable customers operate 
at higher speeds downloads were high they were able to exchange audio video images etc like you are using in whatsapp like you are using on internet all these things are possible today but the important thing is from 1980s to 2020 we have come in a big way and today in india it is 4g is the prevalent mobile technology which offers you audio video images etc to be exchanged through internet okay let me go to the next slide so when you make a call uh let us say raju is making a call from kotem to trivandrum uh he speaks to the tower nearby and from the tower it's a fiber optic cable to a something called a base station the fiber uh, the tower has got some electronic equipment has got some electronic equipment at the base of it which converts this to fiber optic it goes through some exchange and then comes to trivandrum to another tower and that gets connected to hari i'm just giving an example but if you're speaking to bombay or some other place or to uk then it will go through internet which i have shown like here at the bottom so this i have taken for an example to tell you other than mobile to tower everything else is happening not happening in electromagnetic energy they are all taking place in fiber optic cables which is in the form of light as you may be knowing so it is not that much of a worry to us and it is not in free space it is through a restricted conduit through which your conversation is going or your photo is going and some of these fiber optic cables are underground so they get they connect you to your uh, caller uh, who finally gets his call through a mobile tower now what are the figures of merit of 4g in india let us see the download speed of a 4g mobile today in india is if you have a 8 gigabit movie to be downloaded you can do it in 7 minutes that's a download speed you can also say download speed in the form of so many uh, bits per second etc i didn't want to give that uh, uh, data because it may be a bit uh, confusing to people who are not uh, uh regularly associated with uh, technical uh, uh, data so i'm just giving an example if you want to download a movie it will take you 7 minutes in 4g but it was taking 70 minutes in 3g earlier the previous technology the number of towers in a cell cell is an area uh depends on uh how much power you would like to transmit from the tower Uh, what are the tall structures and buildings around that towers so that to get a good coverage you will have more towers if it is a sparse area less residences are there less buildings are there it's open ground then you don't require so many towers because electromagnetic waves can easily go through but when you have many structures many buildings then you require more number of towers so in residential areas when there are many uh, uh apartment buildings with lot of flats you will require more towers to cover the area just remember more towers means more radiation and a 4g tower typically allows 30 voice calls together at one point of time 30 people can be speaking to another 30 people through a mobile tower and can also support 60 data exchanges and i'm introducing one more term called latency that means the time it takes to process your requirement of sending a voice or sending a message or a data it takes some time and that is called latency in 4g it's about max over 100 milliseconds 1/10 of a second it was half a second in 3g why is it critical are we worried about half a second or 1/10th of a second not in the normal way when you talk not in the uh, normal way one would uh, be uh, looking at data exchanges but if you're a doctor 
and you are doing a robotic surgery from a robot station, uh, then um, this could be significant. So we'll touch upon it a little later, but I just want you to tell the word latency is today in 4G about 100 milliseconds, one tenth of a second. So this is how people compare 1G to 4G. You are on the block in 1G, then you started walking, then you started jogging, and now you are uh, going past uh, uh, hurdles in 4G. I don't know how to put 5G. You may be able to put a suitable thing after we finish discussing but the fly, uh, what happens in 5G. We'll touch upon that towards the end. So let's look at the drawbacks of 4G. We said about good things about 4G. Let's look at the drawbacks of 4G. The first drawback of 4G is that your security during online Wi-Fi operations is vulnerable. That means when you go to an airport and you get a free Wi-Fi and you use it, then the security of data which you are you will, will get affected. So just remember this aspect. Second, your mobile's battery gets drained faster the way 4G software runs. It is not energy efficient. How did I come to the conclusion of this? Or how does one come to? Because a new software is type of software has come into 5G, which I'll touch upon later, which is probably more efficient. So today you see 4G is less efficient as far as your mobile battery's ability to retain charge. It consumes more power. When you travel, especially to a foreign country, and you want to change from Geo to some other server in uh, Europe or in UK, you have lots of problems on 4G because the changeover, the switching operation is cumbersome. A lot of settings need to be done on your mobile before you can use it. And lastly, that 100 milliseconds latency, which I talked about, can be very critical for some mission control systems. And uh, therefore, uh, 4G uh, network has got a drawback on this front as well. So two, three drawbacks, security part, mobile battery part, switching operations when you go abroad and latency being high, even though it is far lower than the earlier one, 3G. Now comes the new champion, 5G. What has he brought to the table? Let's look at what 5G has brought to the table. Even though there have been drawbacks on 4G, people have been quite happy about 4G. At least uh, I, as a user of 4G, I find most of my requirements are met by 4G. But scientists have been progressing R&D for the last 10 years in USA and South Korea, two places, for enhancing the figure of merit of 4G further. And they have been able to develop a new software by which they are able to exchange information between tower and the mobile, improve the quality of video, audio. And uh, if you want to enjoy this improvement, you have to have a new set of equipment in the tower. You have to have a new mobile handset in your hand. As simple as that. Now, what these changes are uh, between 4G and 5G regarding the technical part of it, I will respond if there is a question on it. Otherwise, uh, it may be a little uh, complex for the general audience. So anyone who wants to know more details about it, I will share it at that point of time. But you remember, when you want to take Avail 5G, please be sure that you have to buy a new mobile. And please be sure the tower next to your house will have a new set of equipment. And that obviously the mobile company is going to raise your mobile charges for it because he has to buy equipment and put it there. But he'll give you better service. So let's see what are the services like. Uh, 5G will be using a higher frequency. Okay, and they're using some new technology called MIMO, 
this also i will answer uh, if there is a question but you just understand the point that there are new technologies in software there are new technologies in antenna and the tower equipment will be different all this will give you better service with all this incorporated a new 5g scheme was launched in south korea in april 2019 almost 3 years back then usa china uk europe philippines canada etc followed india has not yet done and india is planning to do it by end of this year maybe early next year but they are trying to introduce some high indigenous content so quickly 4g i have not talked about the benefits of 4g yet but 4g has new technologies we are more efficient but it requires a new mobile handset in your with you if you want to use it that goes to next set what is the plan in india government has planned to launch 5g in three bands they will you will hear all this in the newspaper later you will see advertisements when you go to buy a phone they will tell you also it is called low 5g mid 5g and high 5g these are the three bands in which they are planning to launch it the auction as i told you is supposed to have last week of this month it as i mentioned to you 5g will require new equipment and new handsets government has set up this for information test centers at iit madras indian institute of science bangalore kanpur uh etc and in some uh, other psus in uh, pune cdac in pune they spent about 2000 i'm sorry 220 crores it is essentially to help telecom companies to test their equipment test their software if you're getting an indigenous uh, uh, antenna made then you want to get it tested you want to get an indigenous uh, some uh, network controller Uh, you want to get it tested, so these test centers can be used. It's a good investment made by government of India, rather than going abroad and getting it tested. So just remember, some test facilities are being created for telecom companies to test their equipment before they give it to you, or before they install it next to your house. A technology demonstration of 5G, indigenous 5G, was conducted in May 22. That's about uh, three months back. in a call between minister of telecommunications and iit madras which is much publicized in the newspaper and the tv and this has given a lot of confidence to our scientists and our telecom companies that we are getting ready to launch 5g in india so what is the capability which is coming in 5g in india let's have a look at it this is what you will get 60 times faster download you will have how are you getting it i will uh, touch upon in the subsequent slide it will improve the quality of video and audio tremendously you have seen many times uh, photographers telling this photo i cannot use it get pixelized because uh, the uh, the number of pixels in that photo being limited when you enlarge it it gets it breaks down into a small small squares so those sort of problems will get resolved when you have 5g because you will be able to get uh, much sharper uh, photographs uh, very clear audio and it will have lower latency for mission control uh, systems which i will amplify as we go along the government is planning to have a smooth transition from 4g to 5g today you having 4g tomorrow if you have 5g everybody will not go to 5g some people will go some people will not go but they are planning to have a smooth transition for people from 4g to 5g which is very important as i told you 13 cities first the metros are all in the first uh, 13 uh, cities now when you buy a 5g set you can put a sim in that a sim card in that either to use 4g or to use a new 5g you may buy a 5g and you may be staying in uh, some place 
where there is no 5G service, but only 13 cities having 5G service to start with. So there are no cities from Kerala uh, in the 5G service today. So if you buy a 5G phone and you want to use 5G in Kerala, it's not possible because there's no 5G service. But you can use it for 4G as you are using now with a new telephone, with a new mobile cell. Only thing is you have to put a different type of SIM. It's called a 4G SIM. And the high speed and high capacity 5G services are being planned by the government for crowded areas like stadium, campus, industrial estates, defense establishment. They are planning a separate group which will have very high speed and high capacity 5G service, which is not required for normal common man's use. It's not required, but it'll be required for institutions will be required for large number of people uh, in one area, like when you have a football match or when you have uh, uh, a big uh, a meeting going on uh, or in a campus where there are many users, many departments, many laboratories. So when you have so many people using uh, uh, the data and the video circuit, you require uh, high intensity, uh, high capacity, then they will they will offer this to you. Why are they not offering to everyone? I just want to say this high speed and high capacity is only in the high band of 5G, which is very high frequency. And there are some downsides to this high frequency. As we go along, I'll tell you. But just remember, higher the frequency, higher the power, health hazards are more adverse. Let's talk about it a little later. So these are three bands I told you, high, mid, low. See the frequency. Low band is same as 4G. You're facing it today, that those emissions sitting in your house. So there's no change, even if you go to 5G. Some benefits are there, but as far as electromagnetic emission is concerned, it's almost the same. Mid band is 1.25 times, so slightly higher frequency and uh, slightly worsening uh, health uh, aspects. High band is 12 times the frequency of present 4G. And therefore that one has to be very careful. So how do you make sure that this is not uh, being allowed to be transmitted in areas where common people are there who are not interested in this high band? High band is interestingly some small time, small location, some specific function, as I told you earlier, stadiums, campus, meetings, etc. So we will see a little more on these three bands. See, the low band is little better than 4G for service-wise, right? The download speed is higher. Otherwise, there are some changes in frequency and range. Some equipment are changed in the tower. You will have, obviously you'll require a 5G mobile handset in your to use this even low band. Even though its capabilities are not very much different from 4G, you will still require a new mobile handset if you want to use a low band. The mid band, which is what people are anticipating to be the most popular and it's called the sweet spot of the operations. It will be 16 times download will be higher and level of radiation will be higher. As I told you, the frequency is higher and there are more towers will be required and the high frequency, which are only in special areas, the download is 60 times higher. So it is meant for mission critical systems, uh, which are required for, uh, uh, as I told you earlier, many uh, procedures where you can't afford to have latency uh, in the figure of 100 milliseconds or one tenth of a second. You want it much faster with very little delay. So it is for those operations, this will be used. And uh, therefore, high band is unlikely to be released for public use in India. It will be only mid and low, to start with only low. Okay, so let's look at the handset, compatible handset. 
It's a very interesting uh, uh, statement. All handsets are backwards compatible and not forward. What this means is 5G will work on 4G. 4G set will not work on 5G. I'll repeat again. 5G handset will work on 4G. 4G handset will not work on 5G. So it will not work forward. It will only work backward. Similarly, 5G set will work on 5G. But 5G will not work on a future of 6G. It will not work. So this is the principle on which handsets are designed. And the personality of the mobile, 5G personality, is created by its hardware. It's a type of antenna inside your mobile set the type of software which is sitting inside, and of course, the SIM which you are going to put for activation. As I told you earlier, uh, a 4G SIM will only give 4G service on a 5G handset. This I've already mentioned. 5G service will definitely have a higher tariff, especially in the initial few years, because telecom companies will be investing in... Uh, a lot of money on new equipment. They'll be investing a lot of money on testing and uh, customer satisfaction will be obviously higher because downloads are going to be faster. Clarity is there in audio video. So you are prepared to pay more money. So they will take it from you. Just remember, uh, 5G service will have a higher tariff. So where is 5G uh, so critical for mission control systems where latency should be minimum? where industry 4.0 systems are being used. A industry 4.0 system, we talked about it some time back. It reads multiple sensors uh, in an application. So it has to read and act upon. So it needs to be near real time. So latency should be less. So industry 4.0 is an example where 5G is preferred. You're not having industry 4.0 mostly in houses, but it may be in hospitals, it may be in factories, it may be in uh, educational establishments. So industry 4.0 prefers 4G because of lower latency. 5G is good for creating hotspots like stadium, halls, etc., which I talked about. And the interesting application of 5G, traffic analytics. That means today traffic lights in India, as it stands today, are based on time. <clears throat> 25 seconds, 40 seconds, whatever has been put in the control system. Or it is the traffic man is changing by hand. So let's talk about automatic. It is based on a time which has been set. It is possible for the traffic police to change the time in the night as compared to peak hours. All these are based on the traffic policeman's assessment. He says 10 seconds is enough for the traffic to clear from left to right. Or during peak hours, 40 seconds are required. What I'm saying is traffic analytics. That means with the help of GPS, right? you will be able to track. Today, GPS shows you whether traffic is intense or is light by the color on the GPS map. How is that generated? Based on mobile user's position. So similarly, with 5G, you will be able to track the position of 5G users on the road. And you can say the traffic crossing from left to right is another 500 meters more. So I will change the timing of the light, not from, from 40 to 50, I'll change. It will be changed by the control system based on 5G input. No preset. It will be set as per requirement on the spot. It is adaptive to the traffic. If it's a Sunday, there's less traffic, it will go back to smaller number of 20 seconds. On a peak hours, it may be 60 seconds. In the night, it may be only 15 seconds. So all this adaptive control of traffic light, which has not happened in India yet. There are some research going on in Pune, but they're not implemented so far. 
So this is a good application of traffic light. Why should you do it? Is a question. There is a benefit in this. The traffic will move faster on the crowded line. The people standing in the non-crowded line will switch off their engine because they know it is going to be uh, waiting for a longer time. So the carbon footprint will reduce. The smoke emission will reduce from the cars. That is the major benefit of traffic analytics, which 5G can do very, very efficiently. So it's an important aspect. Energy saving, I told you because of traffic and uh, industry 4.0. 5G hotspots can be created on campus and for educational programs, webinars, etc., where course content needs to be disseminated faster because you're explaining with videos and things like that. 5G is faster, downloads are faster, so the quality of teaching would be improved. Now I come to my next slide. What are the uh, disadvantages of 5G. First thing is you have to buy a set, new mobile set, and the old set cannot be used for 5G. First, most important. Second, there's higher radiation, which have got health hazards. And let me touch upon the health hazards on a separate slide for benefit of many of you. First thing is, please understand, 5G is not like X-ray. X-ray is ionizing category. It can break molecular bonds inside your body when you take an X-ray. So that is why X-ray radiation, you should minimize. The operators of X-ray equipment, make sure that they are least exposed. Therefore, 5G radiation is not as adverse as an X-ray. Just remember that. But 5G can heat up your body tissue. Just like microwave heats up your food, something similar, but not to that extent, depending on the intensity of power, 5G can heat up. As the frequency gets higher, especially in the high band, the beams get sharper, the 5G transmitting beam gets sharper and heating becomes more intense. Unlike 4G, in 4G, the beams are not so sharp, it therefore, one has to be aware of the fact 5G will bring in some health hazard due to heating of tissues in your body. One more factor. 5G frequency is higher. As the frequency is higher, the energy waves don't bend in atmosphere. They go straight. In 4G, which have a lower frequency, the waves bend Bending is due to uh, uh, temperature and moisture, uh, etc. But in case of 4G, there's a bending effect. But in case of 5G, there's no bending effect. Since there is no bending effect in 5G in higher frequencies, you require more towers in the same locality. If there are five towers of 4G in, in, in a residential area, right, or in a, in a particular uh, campus, you will require at least eight towers of 5G because the waves don't go straight. The waves go straight and they don't bend. So you it will get obstructed by buildings and other structures. So 5G brings in clarity, audio, video, brings download speed high, but brings this aspect that you will require more towers, more frequency, a frequency higher and more radiation. 5G is reported to be carcinogenic. It has got some adverse effects on oxygen saturation levels as per literature. But the scientists are a divided lot on this. They have been conducting a lot of tests in vivo and in vitro, but their conclusions are not uh, converging. So let us assume 5G's high band will affect health unless a lot of studies uh, in India uh, prove otherwise. While uh, 5G is low and bit bands are very close to 4G, so it may not have very serious adverse impact on uh, health. So, high band of 5G, we should avoid using. 
that is the bottom line so let's come to it's only human beings no birds also get affected essentially because the electromagnetic energy affects the magnetic sensor in the body of the bird and that is used by the bird to know for its migration it compares the earth's magnetic field with by its magnetic sensor and then he says okay i will fly from here to uh, north and from there i'll go to siberia it knows because it has got an a sensor to look at earth's magnetic field and take a path now that sensor will get affected if it gets exposed to electromagnetic energy so it's not a good thing to happen um more towers are required i told you 5g if it is installed near airports it can interfere with the altimeter of aircraft because they operate in the same band altimeter is used for knowing the height of the aircraft when it comes to landing or when it comes to take off uh, so a 5g transmission near airports have to have to be controlled by the authorities and there's also a report saying the weather satellite data which is also in the same band uh, its accuracy can get marred so these are the disadvantages of uh, 5g and most important social media will be more hyperactive because they get your download so fast compared to 6g uh, so compared to 4g that uh, they will be reacting much faster than what they are doing now today it is uh, instant uh, reaction is the one which is causing most of the problems and this, this can become worse if there's 5g this is my appreciation uh, it is not there in any report okay the study reports on uh, transition from 4g to 5g which will be of interest to you they say 5g goals cannot be achieved overnight you also know that low band will be launched first which is very similar to 4g does not worsen health they expect 40% of 4g subscribers in india to shift to 5g by 2027 this is their study i told you earlier 90 crores people are in 4g now it may become even 100 later but 40% will go to 5g remaining people will remain in 4g and this 40% will also increase the traffic in 5g which will be around 56% so 5g has got some uh, market there's a growth promise in that and i'm sure the telecom companies will be happy this so this report i'm not sure how authentic it would be or it is also an estimation anyway so it could be an inspired uh, study as well uh, but they say 4g will be available for 10 more years even though 5g can substitute 4g 4g will not be phased out for another 10 more years this is an important for a lot of us who are in uh, 70 plus category so let us look at this word very carefully sentence very carefully 4g will be available for 10 more years so what are the options for the customer option 1 buy a 5g set and uh, start availing 5g if it is there in your city otherwise put a 4g sim and use a 5g set wait for the 5g to come to your city or your locality that's a one option the second option is don't buy a 5g set give it 4g it's going to run anyway for 10 more years so we you ignore 5g but don't ignore the fact that new towers and high power bands which are being operationalized in your neighborhood just be wary of it let's be educated on that that this can indirectly why indirectly directly cause health problems to the people in that locality and lastly the last option is wait and watch see how 5g is picking up how many people are going to 5g uh and after a few years uh, you may say okay i'll go to 5g this come to my city. so these are the options which are available uh, to the customer and uh, let me uh, conclude uh, saying that uh, 5g servers are expected to commence in a calibrated manner in 2023 there is progressive operationalization of various bands uh, high speed download latency etc etc and this may convince many 4g people to go to 5g they may be enthused to go to 5g 
But 5G is critical for mission control systems, which are in defense, which are in industry 4.0, which are required in medical field, and uh, it is useful for traffic analytics. And also it's very useful when you have to cater for, create a hotspot for uh, a campus or a stadium, etc. There are some benefits of IGOs. High band uh, uses, poses health hazards to human beings and uh, birds. We need to understand a little more on this. The scientists, I hope, will come out with some study advising us. So I think basically feel we should wait for high band uh, only for special applications and not open to general public. Consumers option, I've already told you, live with 4G or buy us 5G or wait and watch. Ladies and gentlemen, I have finished my presentation. Uh, in case you would like to uh, seek uh, any... Uh,